folks, this is all the fruit. I'm in the area of Hirschberg in Germany. And as you can see, there is lots of fruit and wine growing around here. And if you happen to travel, hike, bike around the agricultural areas along the Upper Rhine Valley in Germany and also along a lot of other places in the world, you might realize it's especially prominent here in the Upper Rhine Valley in our part of Germany. You might realize in the lowlands you have mostly grain and stuff. Above that, right where the hills begin, there are some fruit plantations. Above those fruit plantations, there are lots of wine yards, and above the wine yards, there is forest. Well, why is that so? Also, you might realize that the human settlements tend to hug the mountains. They are not in the well, yes, there are lots of human settlements in the lowlands. There are also lots of human settlements in the mountains or hills. But in between, between the lowlands and the hills, there is a lot of quite large human settlements. Well, why is that so? Well, let's, let's start quite a long time ago. Over 2000 years ago, Germany was a gigantic forest and when the Romans first came here they were horribly afraid of the Germans and their gigantic forest. Then the Romans conquered like the southwest of Germany. It's this part of Germany here where I am right now. Yeah, but when they conquered it, it was still a gigantic forest and even today the mountains around here are named after the German gods. This is the Odenwald the wood of Odin over there on the other side you have the Donnersberg or the mountain of Donner or Thor and yeah this is the Palatinate forest which got its name a little bit later and yeah this area southwestern Germany is still the center of German wine and also fruit production over there right in front of those mountains you cannot see it but there is a giant wine yard going all the way from france to mainz over a hundred kilometers long where more than half of all the german wine is being grown and here on this side you will always have continuous wine yards in the foothills of the hills and pretty much everywhere beneath the wine yards you will have a narrow a narrow belt of fruit plantations. Why is that so? Well, let's go back to the Romans. When they settled the area here, they didn't really settle so much in those cold, wet German mountains. They also didn't settle so much in the lowlands because they were basically a giant swamp for half of the year. The Romans actually built their major road in this part of Germany right here along the foothills the Palatea Montana, which is nowadays called the Bergstrasse and gave the whole area its name. And they also built a lot of villas here and the villa for the Romans was basically a big agricultural estate. And they introduced the, uh, the grape vines and also most of the modern fruit we have now, like stuff like chestnuts and walnuts and peaches and also the much more modern plums and apples and pears and yeah they already planted stuff like that here well in the middle ages we had quite a warm climate around here a mediterranean climate so the agriculture actually creeped quite far up the hills on the southern slopes of the hills it went all the way to the top sometimes over 500 meters with wine yards and fruit gardens uh, then we had the 30 years war in Germany and also the little ice age in the 17th and 18th century and that stunned the wine and fruit growing a lot but then in the 20th century it slowly recovered and yeah basically in the 20th century the center of wine growing was definitely southwestern Germany with like over 90% of the total production and also it was the center of fruit growing but why? 
why is it layered like this? Why are the wine yards here and, no in, and not in the lowlands where it would be much easier to cultivate them? Or if they need to be on the hills, why are they here on the lower part of the hills and not on top of the hills? Well, now with the climate change, it would be possible to change all that a little bit. And there are already wine yards creeping into the flat lowlands and also little fruit plantations creeping into the lowlands. But still, all those little farms that live from fruit cultivation, they are here at them at the foothills and even more those uh, little farms which live from wine cultivation. So why is it like this? Why do they grow the most valuable crops like fruit and wine only in such a narrow belt here? Well, let's look at the climate. Nowadays, of course, the swamps here in the lowlands, they are being, uh, they are being drained. But the climate still is quite similar to the old times. So what happens here? Basically in the hills, cold air accumulates and then it flows, flows down the valleys and into the flat lowlands. So in winter we have a phenomenon called, in German, the cold air lakes here in the lowlands. In summer the lowlands are can be horribly hot sometimes, but in winter they will be very, very cold. So the mountains are pretty cold, the valleys are pretty cold, the lowlands are pretty cold in winter, the mountains are also quite cool in summer. So where can we grow our most delicate crops? Well, in the foothills. Basically, uh, the grape vines are the most, uh, well, frost sensitive crop that's grown here on a commercial scale so you will grow them in the most mild areas in the foothills basically you also want to grow them more or less on a southern or southwestern or southeastern slope so they get more sun and even less frost but as you can see here you can also grow them on a western slope and even on a mild northern slope as long as they are in the as long as they are in the mild foothills well, most of the fruit trees around here, here we have a small plum plantation, over there some more plums and cherries. They are a little bit more frost hardy, but in the Upper Rhine Valley we have a very common phenomenon which is called late frosts, and which can damage the, uh, the, fruit, uh, the fruit tree flowers and sometimes even the young fruit. So basically, this is the area where the earliest fruit in Germany come from. So in most years, those farmers can really capitalize on the warm climate and sell expensive early fruit. The farmers which will sell their fruit three weeks later will get a lower price because you will pay twice as much for the first cherries than for the last cherries. Yeah, but it's also a risk because in some years the late frost will destroy the whole harvest. That's why the fruit trees are grown here in the foothills where this risk is a little bit lower. Now with the climate change and also with big greenhouses which you can see in the background, the fruit cultivation is creeping a bit into the, into the, flat, into the flat areas, but it's still quite risky. I'm sure that this plum plantation here is more reliable than the plum plantation just 200 meters away in the background. And also the wine yards, I've never seen a wine yard east of the old Roman, well, of the new successor of the old Roman road. Not a single one for dozens of kilometers. They all stay on this side, in the foothills, in the mildest possible climate around here. I think I made this video a little bit confusing. I hope you still understood everything. Basically what you can Remember is, yeah, in the mildest areas, in the foothills, we have the grapevines. In the little bit less mild areas, we have the fruit trees. In the lowlands, we have corn and, sh and uh, sugar beets and strawberries and stuff. And here in the hills, we have forests. And all this has mostly climatic reasons. So, folks, those were the different types of 
stuff you can cultivate here in this area due to the different microclimate. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful country of Germany. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.